Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to be showing you some of our uh, top free productivity tools mm, and mm. software. We really enjoy these tools here, and they've generally just sped up our work so much. So um, just to give you an overview here, uh, if you, in case you don't want to listen to the entire thing, <laughs> uh, they're going to be OBS, Handbrake, uh, Remote Desktop by Google, Direct Folders, Flux, and Windir Stat. So we're just going to be talking about these specific ones. So let's start actually with OBS. Yay! This is the one we used to record. So now it's going to be some crazy <laughs> parallax effect here. Oh, crazy stuff. Yeah. So OBS is the best thing ever. Yeah. We used to use Camtasia for recordings, and <laughs> that is beyond terrible. It's actually the worst software in the world for recording, yeah. which is weird because it seems like it's such a standardized, especially in schools, mm. software like, oh, you have to record with Camtasia. Uh, no, you don't. Camtasia is terrible. The files are huge. It it corrupts like around a hundred percent of all your files <laughs> ever. We don't flip normal tutorials here oh. where we have spent literally weeks more where uh, it we couldn't render out from Camtasia. We could mm. open them and we had to record the screen <laughs> in Camtasia with Camtasia. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's terrible. So it's OBS is fantastic. It 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 writes a disk right away, so there is no like rendering time or anything on that. Mm. Once you're done, it's done. Yeah. The files are significantly smaller. And you can choose a lot of settings here, like if you want to record only the screen here, or if you want to record um, uh, like second monitors, or mm. only specific specific windows, which yeah. is super handy. Let's say we're recording like um, CBrush tutorials. We don't necessarily want anything else there. We only want CBrush. Yeah. You can also use use for streaming as well. Really useful stuff. Stuff we've been doing some light Twitch streaming, mm. and then we just connect this straight away. Yeah. So and uh, this this OBS works on Mac as well. It's the same mm. for Windows and Mac. If you're on Linux, I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I guess you'll find your way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but OBS, it works for both of them. Fantastic tool. And then we have Handbrake. Handbrake is amazing. This is once you recorded your videos, they might, even from even from OBS, they're still not crazily optimized. Mm. Handbrake will just take your files and just optimize them like like nothing else. I feel like there's some sort of Russian magic compression <laughs> thing going on here. Some of that. It's I I've, I've been so impressed with Handbrake. And if you're doing anything where, you know, especially what we're doing when we're selling products, mm. we take all our videos through Handbrake just because I mean, it sometimes you reduce a file that's a gigabyte down to a few hundred megabytes. Yeah. And you literally can't tell the difference. No. So it's really good at optimizing your your videos, and I think everyone will thank you for that. Yeah. Even if you have, a, let's say, you have a slow upload speed, right? You could handbrake them before uploading it to YouTube and go much faster. We used to do that as well beforehand. Yeah. It's really useful stuff. Um, yeah. So can't recommend handbrake enough. And again, same on Mac. Handbrake works for both Windows and Mac. Yeah. Now, the next one is one of my all-time favorite tools is Chrome Remote Desktop. Mm. So I've um, I've been traveling a lot in the past, different countries, and trying to figure out what is the best, absolute best solution for remote desktop. And I've tried everything, mm. you know, it's Paragon software. It's like, it's just, I can't get them to work as well as Chrome Remote Desktop. And Chrome Remote Desktop is free, which blows my mind. I mean, Google probably steals all of your information <laughs> while you use this, but I think that's, that's just the price that you pay. Yeah. Um, so here I have my Mac and my PC set up. And all you have to do is just connect to your device and then boom, there you go. Now you're on your other device. I use this all the time when I'm in bed and I'm mm. too lazy to, uh, you know, get out of bed because I need something <laughs> on my other computer. <laughs> then I Chrome more desktop into it. Or you, if you it's sit... It's very in, pathetic, actually. <laughs> <laughs> or if you sit in the living room or if you are away from home. Uh, we had that. We were on holiday for mm. two weeks and I just had my computer on all the time. I know, terrible for the environment, mm -hmm. uh, but I had to work so I could Chrome Remote Desktop. What are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. So really, really powerful tool and it's free. And again, same for Windows and Mac. Mm. So use it there. I think, I think that it's so funny when you're literally lying in bed <laughs> and instead of walking up and just spending like 10 seconds more. Yeah. <laughs> but it works, you know, it's, it's a fantastic tool. <laughs> definitely use, uh, definitely look into remote desktop. If I had more computers than one, <laughs> I'd be definitely be using remote desktop from Google in Chrome. So this next one is, as far as we could see, it's like a Windows only one. Yeah, I think so. You can't really find an equivalent for Mac. Maybe someone out there knows it. It's called, uh, it's called direct folders. 
and uh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, we're of course linking linking uh, download links to all this. It's um, this is a tool I used to use like back to ten years ago, and uh, it's it's still really really handy. It's um, it's for folders. Instead of like going to your favorites all the time, you can just middle click and you can just directly go to some of your favorites. Really, really useful if you are in a production environment and mm. you just have like a hundred different folders and you go to these folders all the time. Yeah. So you can middle click and just to get up your favorites and you can just middle click and just hit add here to, to go there. This is uh, one of these tools which in production has saved me so much time. I, I we, we used to work on a team back in back in Bergen in Norway where everyone had this enabled and we had to browse for the same directory every single time <laughs> and in the beginning we would just like browse manually yeah. but then everyone got this and we saved like hours in total every day at least at least at least hours actually saved entire working days yeah during the we day. were done with the project before it started because <laughs> of direct folders <laughs> super handy and the next one is Flux. So your eyes and your entire body will thank you for this. Mm. Flux is just, it just modifies the colors on your screen as you progress throughout the day. Yeah. So really, you have that whole thing of people not being able to sleep, including myself, because you stare at a screen for too long. And the blue light yeah. from your screen is actually terrible so, for your eyes. So bad. So what Flux will do is, you can't actually see this now, <laughs> but it'll actually adjust the colors. So mm. just take our word for it that my screen is entirely orange right now. <laughs> yeah. About as orange as that dot right there. Yeah, we, we actually tried to record this and see if it works, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. We could do some fancy post-processing, but we're not going to do that. Yeah, so depending on your location, you know, it'll progress throughout the day, and then it'll start going more and more red as the evening yeah. goes on. I have this on my phone as well. Uh, for This is for Android. It's called Twilight. Hmm. Highly recommend that as well. Because it's like Morton was saying, you can't sleep because of it. And you're wondering, why can't I sleep? I used to sleep so well. And they've been thinking for the last four years, you've been <laughs> blasting white and and um, and blue light into your retina. And then you're like, now it's sleep time. Yeah. Of course that doesn't work. But um, iFlux has just saved me so much. Keep in mind that if you do any kind of color sensitive work, you've got to disable this. Yeah. You can, um, and it's very easy to get uh, used to it. Yeah. So it sometimes in the evening you might not even realize because it progresses so slowly over the yeah. day. And oh, you've done all your texturing, but you've done it with like a orange lot yeah. on all of it's a sudden. Infuriating. Uh, it's funny what you're saying about like you get used to it because you get used to it so quickly. Yeah. So you're like, I don't really see this being this this crazy, and then you disable it while you're in like a white web page. You go like and, exit, and then you die. And it burns. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it physically hurts your eyes. And I feel like that's a good. That's like a good indicator that that light is not good for you. <laughs> yeah. I, I just got a statistic over that in terms of like with the whole sleep thing. And like when you're lying with something like your iPhone, mm. in terms of locks, it's 800, which is like a screen trying to simulate being as bright as the sun <laughs> when you look at it. And that's usually what you look at yeah. uh, during the evening. And then you can't sleep. And so can't weird. Sleep. Yeah. So you're watching this all day, every day. And uh, then you go home and you watch memes on your phone <laughs> right before going to bed. It's terrible for you. Yeah. So check this out again. This one works for uh, Windows and Mac as well. And it's also free. Yeah. Really handy. Now, the last one is a software that was created in the depths of purgatory, <laughs> I think. But it's the best thing in the world. Yeah. Windierstat. This is amazing for finding out where is where did all your space go mm. on your computer. Um, especially if you're working with Adobe applications like After Effects and Premiere. They tend to, for some unknown reason, store caches away from where your caches would normally be stored and you can't yeah. clear it within the software. So this just shows you, oh shit, I'm using like 10 gigs over here, five yeah. gigs over there, what is it? So, you know, really, really handy software to just go through your computer and you can see, okay, here I can go and I can delete some stuff. Yeah, I, I used this just this week as well. I had around 100 megabytes free on my, my hard drive and I had to render <laughs> out a six gigabyte file. And I could have swore I had, I had 10 gigabytes left before. But it turns out the, the Adobe cache folder yeah. was was eating everything. And like Morgan was saying, there are two Adobe cache folders. <laughs> you have the one which is in the settings, and that cleared around 7 gigabytes. But then there was another one, which was 40 gigabytes, <laughs> which is just insanity. And I'm on a laptop editing all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I have 500 gigabytes. If you have if you have a cache folder, which is casually taking up 10% of all of it. Yeah, it's not the, not ideal. I had to delete Civilization 6 to be able to record, to get out our videos. Man, what, is that even a life to live that anymore? Is, that is a rough life to live. <laughs> I'm sure if... <laughs> just had to take a long walk after that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, unfortunately... 
there is probably a free alternative for Mac. I mm. use Daisy Disk myself, which is a mm. paid software. It's not that expensive. Um, it is paid though, but it does exactly the same thing. You can see your stats, everything, go in and delete things that shouldn't be there, like Adobe things. Yeah, Adobe maybe this things. more is like more like a hate video towards <laughs> yeah. Adobe cache folders or something. Yeah, I like Adobe products. I just specifically hate Adobe cache folders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, I think right there you can see an After Effect cache file, for <laughs> yeah. example, which might I don't know be this. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty massive. Yeah. So I, I use this tool all the time. So all the tools we've been talking about now, they are they're tools which once you get used to them, it's really hard to go back on them. Yeah. All all free free tools which are awesome. Mm. They might look like they're made in in the depth of purgatory, and <laughs> their interface might not be super pretty. But when it comes to finding where space is on your hard drive. Who cares what it looks like? Yeah. Just give me some stats. So yeah, that's um, that's that's all for now. If you have any good tools as well you want to share, mm. we'd love to hear them. Like I'm 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 crazy about like free tools like this, which <laughs> increases productivity. That's like that's like fifty percent of my life is productivity tools here and apps and all that. Like you spend so much time trying to find optimized ways to be predict to be productive. Yeah, like it's not even close to worth it. <laughs> no. So if you have any more time waste for me in terms of increasing productivity, let us know. We'd love to. We'd love to hear that. Yeah, and uh, make sure to leave a comment down below, or like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. For sure.